Hi guys, hope everybody's doing well. I don't get to talk to you guys too much anymore. Um, let's do some dermatology, shall we? This is week four, and it's the spring of 2020. Let's talk about keratosis pilaris and actinic keratosis. You probably never heard these words before in your life, but I guarantee you once we go through these, you're going to go, oh yeah, that's what that is. So let's see what it is. We'll start with KP. Keratosis pilaris or pilar pilaris, and it like, looks like goose pimple, doesn't it? And that's what it is. It's often called, in fact, goose flesh or goose pimples. So very easy to confuse with the sympathetically induced goose pimples when the sympathetic nervous system turns on. Um, but it ain't that. It can look like some other things as well, like infantile acne, childhood acne, teenage acne can all kind of resemble it. Right? Does this thing have KP, keratosis pilaris? No, that's just a plucked goose. But it really looks awful similar to plucked goose look. Hence the term goose flesh. How about that? That looks like a plucked turkey too, but that's actually just someone who's got real bad goose bumples from sympathetic stimulation. Got scared in a movie or something. We've all had that feeling. Let's talk it over. It's a very common, benign. I bet you half of you guys have had this when you're probably when you're younger, a little bit. And it's non-inflammatory, so it's nothing to do with inflammation. And uh, it presents like goose flesh, like little tiny papules. Remember, papules are raised lesions that are made by some kind of filtrate or some kind of product being made. And that's what this is, actually. And the key with this one is, unlike acne, which clogs up the skin pores, um, this one has nothing to do with that. But it dumps a kind of a barrier around the skin pore. And remember, a skin pore leads to a follicle, follicular canal, and the follicle is contained, of the hair follicle is contained within a little container, and that's called the follicular canal. So therefore, these papules are, are often called follicular papules, or hyperkeratotic, here's a better word, hyperkeratotic follicular papules. So we'll keep expanding on that. Uh, what about the demographics? Uh, more common uh, in adolescents, about 65% of adolescents have this, maybe a little more, uh, and less frequently seen in children, but adults get this too, about almost half, 40% of adults get this to some degree. And it is seen with some other skin conditions. Uh, with We talked about atopic dermatitis last time, so it's seen concomitantly in about 50% of patients with atopic dermatitis. What does that mean, concomitantly? That means in addition to the atopic dermatitis lesions, they have KP lesions as well. Uh, even more common in something called ichthyosis vulgaris, which is where your skin looks like fish scales. I don't think we went over that. I might have taken that out because it's a little more rare. Uh, so, again, it's non-inflammatory. The papules are not caused by any type of inflammation. Um, but what is the bump caused by then? It's caused by keratin deposition. And the keratin deposition is not inside of a cell this time. It's dumped on the surface of the, the top layer, uh, stratum corneum, and it's dumped and starts to pile up. It's almost like you've seen a gopher hole, how it has a hole and they have a little mound of dirt kind of surrounding the gopher hole. It looks just like that up close. Uh, but this keratin has nothing to do with clogging up the uh, the follicular canal. So acne vulgaris, which is the run-of-the-mill acne, is a clogging of the follicular canal. Uh, and the bugs go wild if it's clogged up. They can't. Uh, they just breed like crazy. And they eat sebum and they cause uh, inflammation and that's a zit. But this is non-inflammatory. This is not as it. You can't pop this thing. Right? Here's a, this little, to remind you, there's skin. Here is a follicle. Right? There's a hair shaft, and there's the follicle. And the follicle lives in a canal, and that canal is the follicular, uh, follicular canal. 
The pore is on the outside. That's the skin pore. Right, here's some KP on the arm. Likes the lateral arm. Uh, likes the thighs as well, as we'll see. We've seen that. Some of you going, oh, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. I had that at one time. So all this keratin can actually, if it's enough, piled up, it can start to give the little mound a white look to it, almost like it's filled with pus or like it's a white head, right? But again, you can't you can't pop you can't pop it. Uh, white heads, by the way, we don't I won't call them that anymore. They're called closed comedones. If you don't know that, make sure. Uh, or open comade, comadones are black heads. Closed comadones are white heads. Make sure you know the difference between those two. That's real easy for me to make a question on that, right? And switch closed and open comadones. So watch out for that one. A lot of stars here. Uh, the KP lesions, again, they're best described as hyperkeratotic, meaning there's too much keratin produced by those corneal sites. Uh, follicular papules, which are little bumps which are made around the follicles. There's another picture of one. Another picture. Uh, where does it like to strike? It particularly likes the posterior and posterior lateral surface of the arm and the thighs. It can hit the anterior surface of the thigh. Uh, and it's not a dangerous condition. It has no effect on lifespan or no uh, other problems, but of course, psychosocial issues. If you get this, doesn't usually it can show up in the face in rare cases, but usually doesn't hit the face. Uh, dry weather, like in the winter when you have the heater on, tends to worsen all dermatological conditions for that matter. This one included, but these tend to pop out in the winter. Uh, there is some genetics related to them, there's a familial tendency. I think it's autosomal dominant. And can you get something to get rid of it? It's pretty darn tough to get rid of this. Most of the time it goes away with the passage of time, uh, but it is refractory. What's that mean, refractory, to most treatments? It's resistant to most treatments. Uh, but it does tend to kind of, if you had it as a teenager, maybe you had this as a teenager and you look right now and there's probably hardly any of it left. I had two daughters who had this pretty bad and they both grew out of it. There's three subcategories you could really get into this. I'm not going to get into this. There are some associations, as we said. People do have a tendency to have other skin conditions who have this. There's also a tendency for diabetes. People tend to uh, become diabetic later in the future, or if they are diabetic, they tend to get this condition more often. But atopic dermatitis, ichthyosis vulgaris, uh, Down syndrome, babies tend to have this. Some more fun facts. Uh, the lesions are always the same size. There's not big ones and little ones. That's not acne, right? Acne, you have all different sorts of lesions, big ones and little ones, and white heads and black heads and boils. Uh, these are all the same type of lesions. It sometimes shows up with a erythemic background. So sometimes the first thing happens is you think, uh, well, you get like redness, uh, these kind can show up on the face when this happens. Uh, so you can get an erythema starting on the face. You think it's rosacea, and then it's not rosacea because these little white things start popping up. So it can kind of fake derm even dermatologists out, and they think it's rosacea starting if it happens on the face. Uh, and then if it's on the face with the red background, you can start getting the white kind of piles of keratin, and it looks really looks like acne on a red face. So usually it doesn't happen here, but it sure can. And if it does, it usually uh, has a red background to it. And you can see all the little white things. And uh, those, are not, those are not zits. Your white heads are closed comedones. You can't, you can't pop those things. You can try. can't pop them. Why? Because they're keratin. They're uh, built into the skin. All right, there's a really common look. Right? It looks like you can pop them. You can squeeze those as hard as you want. You won't pop them. There's nothing to come out. So what do you do for them? The treatment doesn't really 
work very good. No treatment is good. Uh, Omoilient therapy, using my favorite cream here. I hate cream, but for my skin conditions, this stuff was recommended by Stanford Dermatology. And I always saw this little thing. I thought, oh, my wife told me to get this. I'm like, she goes, it's dermatology recommended. I say they always say that. All of them say that, but it, it actually was. And it works really good. It's not greasy. And so uh, emollient therapy, anything dry, crusty, put them, uh, except for poison oak, right? Be careful with that. But the rule of thumb is if it's dry and crusty, put some lotion on it to, to get that barrier function back in your skin. That's the first step. If that doesn't work, the tretinoids work good. Um, one called Retin-A, which is prescription. That's uh, one of the tretinoids, popular choice. It can reduce the redness if it's on your face, uh, so that's good. But it can't get rid of it uh, completely. But the, the people are usually happy with the results. Uh, it, you have to be careful. You can't use it too much because it can actually irritate uh, the skin and cause an inflammation. So you don't want to use larger doses or use it more often than recommend, uh, recommended. Uh, if it's still bad, if you want to really attack it, a short course of topical steroids can be added uh, in addition to the retinoid treatment. Uh, that can also take care of some of that uh, erythema, which is an inflammation that started under the skin. Uh, but the lesions themselves are non-inflammatory. Some people use that before a public speaking event if they need to clear that up. Uh, some of the roughness and those little whitehead-like appearance. There's some salicyclic acid lotion that seems to work pretty good. Uh, so uh, the abrasion uh, washing techniques don't work. Some say rub your face with lava or what is that stuff, that sand. It's like crushed up. That does not have anything to do with it. It won't a waste of money. Yeah, it can be on the butt talks. All right, that's enough of that one. All right, here is the great, this is one of the trickiest ones that will cover this whole quarter. This is one of the tricky ones there is. This is SK, seborrheic keratosis. Not to be confused with actinic keratosis, which is pre-squamous cell cancer. We'll get to that one. Not to be confused with lentigo, but they sure can look like, it can look like melanoma. SK looks like a lot of different stuff, so let's go over it. Here's an easy one to identify. It looks warty and gross like this. Uh, pretty much always seborrheic keratosis, although some moles can get a little bit warty looking as uh, as you go through, uh, as they, it goes through its lifespan. So it can be very confusing. There's some AKs for this. Uh, seborrheic wart, seborrheic veruca. Uh, which means wart like uh, Veruca seborrheic senilis because it happens usually in older people who are senile. They don't have to be senile, but it does happen in older people. This one, the star of the show here, a great board question. Uh, the, it's the most common cutaneous neoplasm of the skin period. So if you're going to get some type of skin lesion, you're, this is what you're going to get. Seborrheic keratosis. So common in older individuals, it's almost every old of it, every person over 60 probably has at least one of these on their body somewhere. It's super, super common. Just like macules are also, or not macules, or lentigo is off, also really, really common. These two are often mixed together. But it has many different looks. It can look an awful lot like, like cancer in some of those looks. Uh, and it can look uh, verrucous or warty looking. I guess it's pronounced, according to the internet, ver, like igloo, eh, vericus, vericus. I like verrucus better. It's tomatoes, tomatoes. Uh, there is, we already said, there's a hereditary factor to this. It likes Caucasians more than any other race. It usually doesn't show up uh, until about the age of 30 or so. Uh, and it can continue. It tends to get worse as you get older and older and older. I got a couple of these popping up, and uh, lately myself, I've never had them. And yeah, I must be getting old. That means 
Um, but yeah, old people can have hundreds of these things. They're typically confined to hair bearing surfaces or hair suit skin. It spares the glabrous skin. Make sure you know the difference between hair suit and glabrous skin. Right? Spares the glabrous skin, which is palms and soles. The ones with that extra layer, right? The extra layer in glabrous skin. This is classic right here. These are well developed, kind of warty looking. This is really blown up. So from a distance, they look kind of like barnacles, I think, that grow on a ship. But this is a classic look. It's warty. Um, yeah, and there's all different phases of these things growing. Um, but they, I mean, you can literally scrape these out. They don't penetrate into the dermis. Uh, the treatment is just kind of scrape them off, and we'll, we'll see as we go through. But that's the only one look. Uh, so we're not 100% sure what causes it, but it looks like it's a gene mutation in the FGF R3 and or the Pike 3CA genes. Uh, that get mutated, and if they're mutated, the mutation usually causes them to overexpress fibroblast growth factor receptors. So FGF, of course, stimulates growth, cell growth, and if if those receptors are on cells, they will bind to every single FGF molecule that's floating. It binds too much, and that stimulates the cell to go through mitosis, and they they grow. They're not cancerous. They don't become metaplastic or dysplastic or hyperplastic, uh, but they just grow in different speeds, and this different speed growth kind of can give some crazy different presentations. So here's one that they're not really quite as warty. Maybe that one's a little more warty, but it's a little different look. They look kind of like macules, which remember macules are, or not macules, lentigo lesions. Lentigo lesions are macules that are flat and brown like that. But these are raised. These will be rough and bumpy, like barnacles on a ship. Uh, typically present with very sharp and defined borders. Right? You can definitely see where this one starts. That's a sharp, well-defined border. Uh, it's raised, so it can be a papule. Might even be a, a plaque. They can get real big, as we'll see. Uh, when they're starting out, maybe it's, it looks exactly like a lentigo lesion. could be a, like a macule. Very hard to tell apart sometimes. Or maybe it gets big like a plaque. But they usually get bigger as time goes by. They usually have a bunch of these. They're multiple. Uh, but occasionally you can have one solitary one. And that's if it ha takes on that cancer look, that can be a little scary. Uh, and as they get older, they tend to become more warty, just like a mole. As moles get older, they tend to become more warty as well. And so does SK, seborrheic keratotic lesions, become more papillomatous uh, as they become, or, or more verrucous. Papillomatous and verrucous are both like a warty way to describe a warty type lesion. And scarily, they can even start, is that a word, scarily? Uh, they can even get slightly variegated, so different colors within the lesion. And that always looks a little scary, right? You start thinking cancer. A little water here. Most commonly form, found on the trunk, especially underneath to lift up the breasts. Uh, they tend to grow underneath there. They also can be on any sun-exposed surface. They tend to show up in the face, in the arms, in the legs, hairline, no glabrous skin though. Here's kind of the typical evolution. They start out as a macule, uh, maybe raise up as a little papule, and then they start to get, a, as they get bigger, they get a little darker in color and they get a little verrucous looking. Uh, and then they, as they get bigger, they get crazy verrucous and even darker. They can be variegated though. This, didn't show that. It does happen. There's another look. This waxy drop of wax look is let yet another appearance of these things. We'll take a look at some of those. We'll take a look at a bunch of these. Um, so you're going to see a lot of these over your career. Large ones uh, have this waxy, or you feel them and they almost feel greasy or slippery even to the feel as uh, some products rub off on your fingers. They're normally not inflammatory. 
but you can scrape them or bump them against something if they get big and you can rip it off and it could it can bleed a little bit and it can get inflamed to and infected so scraping injuries are quite common with these things um, so here's kind of some waxy looking ones you see how shiny those are uh, in different stages of evolution here uh, so there's a little lentigo mixed in here if these things are flat you have to call it lentigo right but when it starts to get a little bit more raised and um, yeah, so this is classic SK mixed with a little lentigo in there as well. Here's one that has that waxy kind of look to it. It was scraped a few weeks earlier and it was brown looking and now it's red because it's inflamed inside of it. So they're in the dermatologist getting ready to have that thing taken off. Here's some other ones that are scraping type injury. Uh, where they got infected it's probably scratching at them or something and they got infected but inflamed sk lesions what are the surface characteristics the mo they have multiple appearances again but they can be variegated i guess we're still kind of on this topic as i said they can be variegated and they can have irregular borders and they can look just like malignant melanoma to the point you can't tell them apart. You might have to biopsy it to see. I'll show you some little tricks, which I officially shouldn't show you. Because you, if, if they break the ABC rules, you need to refer to a dermatologist. You know, why risk that license that you're paying so much money for when all you have to do is say, go to the dermatologist. Much easier to do that and don't have to worry about it. Write it down, though, in your travel cards. Better yet, give them a referral. Two other common conditions that can look like this is lentigo as we said another one called actinic keratosis can sometimes resemble this so seborrheic keratosis usually isn't yellow actinic keratosis which is pre squamous cell carcinoma it's, it doesn't always but it usually has a yellow look to it and some species of seborrheic keratosis can also have that yellow look so it can get really tricky I mean, is this a melanoma? This looks exactly like a melanoma. It's variegated. It's coarse. It's densely variegated. It's pretty dark here, super light over here, kind of medium here. This is really blown up, but kind of the savior here is these little bubbles that you can see in here. And I'm not saying don't ever try to do this yourself. You send this. This is multiple mel or not multiple melanoma. This is a malignant melanoma until it's proven otherwise uh, but those little bubbles give it away that it's not uh, it's not melanoma it's actually SK lesion but you cannot again that thing looks so much like melanoma it's got to be referred out refer this thing out immediately surface characteristics it's got that kind of stuck barnacle appearance that's stuck on the skin appearance kind of you could you could scrape it off if you wanted to that's what the doc does. They literally scrape the thing off. Um, again, lentigo can be mixed in with these lesions. Um, typically within, they're not, they're only about 0.7. They're not even a millimeter thick. That's why they come off so easy. Uh, they typically don't penetrate the dermis. If it penetrates the dermis, it's probably lentigo malignant. So if you don't know what barnacles are, there's barnacles that are stuck to something that's been in the ocean for a long time and scrape those off just like you scrape these things off okay how about this what are these we've seen this picture before patient comes in oh my god doc I got you can tell he's out in the sun he's got a red neck not that he's a red neck but he's got a red neck because he's been out in the sun his ears are red um, so is this SK? It's probably not SK. They're flat. You can see them. They're flat and light brown. They're not getting dark. They can't be freckles, plus he's too old. What are those? That's lentigo. Those are lentiginous lesions. Classic lentigo there. How about this one? Well, lentigo loves, for whatever reason, to be right under the breast. I don't know if it gets more sunlight there. Uh, or whatever they do like to show up right underneath the breast and they're raised up so can't be lentigo remember lentigo's flat uh, so you're not going to have moles that many moles moles are usually solitary 
Now, these things, when you see them in groups like these, these are not moles. Moles can look like if this was the only one there, it could look like a mole. And we'll get to moles. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, it's SK, seborrheic keratosis. Let's look at some of the different examples. There's one that's kind of got that waxy appearance to it. Um, these are seborrheic. That looks just like melanoma. Can't tell it apart. I can't even really see. I guess I can see some of the little bubbles, but really, really hard to tell apart from mel melanoma. This is easier to tell apart, but even when they get warty, they have different looks to them with regard to the kind of the wartiness. Um, so more verrucous or warty look. Yep. Moles can kind of look like that, but not so pigmented. And there's probably other ones around as well. Okay, now here's a good one where it looks like melanoma and it's really got those little like, almost looks like closed comedonas again, doesn't it? Like white heads here. But usually when you see that, even though this thing looks really scary, it's dark. It's got some light variegation. It looks like melanoma, but it's not. And that one is just, um, I mean, that looks like basal cell carcinoma almost. So just a different look for these things. This one really looks like melanoma, but there's a couple of these little white bubbles in there. There's one there. This is really magnified, right? So look at see his hair. So that's probably what three, four millimeters. Not it's not melanoma. It's seborrheic keratosis. Here's this is the one that this looks exactly like actinic keratosis. I mean, as far as you're concerned, that's pre-cancer. That needs to be taken off. Um, but it turned out to be not uh, uh, AK. It turned out to be SK, seborrheic keratosis. And they can get really big. Here's some kind of big flavors of these things. And some people might say, oh, isn't that lentigo malignum melanoma? Nope, because it's too raised up. And it's kind of got that warty look to it again. Uh, so classic seborrheic keratosis. Kind of the big variety. What do you do for these things? Well, they're they're not even a millimeter deep, so you literally can scrape the things off for cosmetic purposes. Uh, or if it keeps getting inflamed, you can have it scraped off. You could even, no, I should not say that. Don't scrape that off yourself. Uh, but uh, you don't need a scalpel here. It's not going to leave a scar because it doesn't go into the dermis usually. And you can use this thing called curatage, which is a scraper. And you rake it. It's more like a kind of a loop rake, and you rake it off. Uh, or you can use some, you could freeze it off as well. Uh, you can get some lidocaine injections around it first. Might hurt a little bit, uh, but it doesn't bleed much. Actinic keratosis, you try to scrape that thing off. These things are rooted all the way down to the derma. Or in, they're very close to the dermis. That's why it's a precancer. It's right in the stratum basale. This thing will rip up the dermis and it'll bleed like crazy. Uh, but these SK lesions won't bleed like crazy. Okay, and there's a uh, curatage. Uh, and this is sharp right here. And you literally scrape the thing right off. And that's how they treat it. And they get underneath it. It's just hit, hitting the dermis a little bit. So a tiny bit of blood's coming. But yeah, that's about all there is to that. Okay, there we go. So I will see you guys next week. Uh, somebody let me know when you want the dermatology test. Uh, either week 7 or week 8. It doesn't matter to me. Whatever fits into your schedule the best. Uh, so let somebody let me know that. And it looks like we're locked down right until the whole month of May. I just kind of got the word yesterday, last night, that the shelter in place has been extended. So I have a feeling this whole quarter is going to be online. Uh, so the test will be online. All right. Anyway, somebody let me know when you want your test. All right. See you later.